Hi, in this video we are going to see the pressure and volume changes in a cardiac cycle. So this question has been asked before as a part of a short essay question but mainly as drawn label questions in which they ask you to draw the cardiac cycle or uh, draw, the, draw and label the left ventricular pressure changes during a normal cardiac cycle and right ventricular pressure curve during a normal cardiac cycle. So today basically we will be seeing this, this part, the drawn label part of this cardiac cycle. So first we will see how we can draw, show the pressure changes in the ventricles. But before moving on to the diagram proper, we should first know what are the phases of ventricular contraction. So we know that the ventricles have got a systole and diastole and that systole is approximately 0.3 seconds and the duration of the diastole is around 0.5 seconds and systole is then divided into three phases which is isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase. Whereas diastole is divided into five phases which, is, which are protodiastole, isovolumetric relaxation, rapid filling phase, slow filling phase or which is also called the diastasis and as well as the active filling phase which is which coincides with our atrial systole. Okay. So systole the time is 0.3 so and the phases are also 3. And in diastole, the time is 0.5 and the phases are also 5. Okay. Now we will see how we can show these different phases and pressure changes in our diagram. So to draw the diagram, we can first show the different phases. So if this is a systole, this should be the diastole. Remember the duration or the, uh, the time taken for the systole is lesser. Right. It is just 0.3 seconds. And for diastole, it is more 0.5 seconds. So when you draw the columns, it should be proportionate to that. Right now, we will divide each of the systole and the diastole into its corresponding phases. So, for that, you should roughly know which is which phase is bigger and which is smaller. Okay, so for during ventricular systole, the first phase is isovolumetric contraction, in which you can see that it is just just a 0 0.05 seconds. So, you can draw a very small column to depict that part. Okay, next is a rapid ejection phase of 0 0.1 seconds, you can draw a bigger column for that. And then we've got a slow ejection phase of 0.15 seconds. So in the systolic part, the major part will be for the slow ejection phase. Okay, the major time uh, gap will be for the slow ejection phase. Right. Now we'll move on to the ventricular diastolic part, in which we've got protodiastole of just 0 0.04 seconds. We so we just need a very small column for that. And then we'll have isovolumic relaxation phase. So again, a very small column for that. And then we've got the rapid filling phase which is around 0.11 second and then we've got the reduced filling phase or the diastasis which is around 0.19 seconds. So in this group actually the reduced filling phase or the diastasis will have the major uh, gap here because that is of the ma maximum duration 0.19 seconds. Okay. So that was about the slow filling or the diastasis and finally we've got the lap rapid filling phase or active filling phase which corresponds to our atrial systole. So that is around 0.1 second. Okay, so here we have divided the systole and the diastole into the different phases, and the gap we've shown it depicting the duration. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Now we'll move on to the pressure changes. So for before that, we have to in the y-axis you have to show the pressure. You can measure, you can calibrate, uh, show it from 0 to 120 because for left ventricles the maximum pressure is around 120 millimeters of mercury. See, remember, if it is a right ventricle, ventricular pressure changes are asked, this pressure uh, values will change because in right ventricle, the maximum is 25 millimeters of mercury. But here, because we are showing the left ventricular pressure changes first, we will draw it according to the left ventricular pressure. So here, the maximum is 120. Okay. So in the first phase, which is the isovolumetric contraction phase, we know that the intraventricular pressure will rise rapidly because in during the uh, isovolumetric contraction the valves are closed okay so the volume is remaining constant and but still the ventricles are contracting so the pressure will just shoot up okay up till say around 80 millimeters of mercury and then what happens is see as I said before initially before the isovolumetric contraction the AV valve had closed the atrioventricular valve was closed that is why we say it is isovolumetric okay but by the end of this isovolumetric contraction your semilunar valves will open that means in case of left ventricle, the aortic valves will open and there will be rapid ejection of blood. Okay. 
so during the rapid ejection phase the pressure will increase again so in case of left ventricle it will be around 120 and in case of right ventricle it will be around 25 so remember the pressure in left ventricle is around 4 to 5 times more than that of the right ventricle so in the graph you can draw accordingly so see here you can see that the pressure has risen from 80 to around 120 now during the slow ejection phase this pressure just falls off back to around 80 okay so that that was about the systole phase now what what will happen in diastole see in proto after once this uh, slow ejection phase is over and before the beginning of the isovolumetric contraction phase your aortic valve will close okay so then we have this proto diastole and the isovolumetric relaxation phase in which the intraventricular pressure will drop rapidly it will actually drop into around say 2 to uh, 2 millimeters of mercury and then by the end of this isovolumetric relaxation phase the AV valve will open so once this AV valve open there will be flow of blood from the there will be filling of ventricles from this uh, atria okay so we can see that the pressure is less and the there will be filling the filling during the filling time the pressure will be maintained at a very low level say around 2 millimeters of mercury and then finally it is when the last phase that is during that active filling phase which correspond to our atrial systole that there will be a slight increase in the ventricular pressure which will be around 6 to 7 millimeters of mercury in the right ventricle and in case of left ventricle it will be around 7 to 8 that is only a difference ok so by that by this phase you have completed one cardiac cycle so you can draw ideally in this diagram you have to draw two cardiac cycles so you can draw the same once again showing the different uh, the curve the pressure changes as well as the relaxation phase okay so this is how you will draw the ventricular pressure curve right so now we will have to depict the pressure changes in the iota so whenever this any question related to cardiac cycle is asked you have to draw all these components to show the different changes so we will see the pressure changes in the iota see for that we know that see this is the aortic valve component so you can see that initially the pressure was around 80 millimeters of mercury the pressure in the aorta is around 80 millimeters of mercury now it is during the rapid ejection phase that you, obviously there is blood flowing to the aorta so the pressure there will increase so it will increase up to 120 millimeters of mercury okay and by the end of the rapid ejection phase that increase in pressure will fall off and then there will be slight decrease in the pressure there will be fall in the aortic pressure okay so here you can see that initially the aortic pressure was less than that of the left ventricle but after that the the pressure in the aorta is slightly more than that of the left ventricle so when you draw that you have to draw it like this initially less than left ventricle after that just slightly more than left ventricle now by the end of this isovolumetric uh, I mean uh, by the end of this ejection phase the aortic valve will close and after that here you can see that there is a slight drop in the pressure that is because there is a sudden closure of the seminona walls that is why we have got a slight dip here and that is known as a dichrotic notch so here you have got this slight notch here and then and after that there will be a very smooth decline in the pressure of the iota ok so see initially during the rapid ejection phase there was increase in the pressure it reached up to 120 and then it decreased up to 80 and then when this uh, suddenly when the semilunar walls close there is a slight drop in pressure which causes a dichrotic notch and then it smoothly declines so that is how you will draw the aortic pressure curve right now we will see the pressure changes in the atria so in the atria the pressure changes will be something like this so here you can see that basically there are three waves the A wave, the C wave and the V wave here also the A wave, C wave and V wave so what do these depict so the a wave is caused due to atrial systole right so that is why so when there is an atrial systole obviously the pressure in the atria will increase so that is why we have got a slight increase in pressure during the atrial systole the next wave that is a c wave it occurs at the onset of the ventricular systole that is because the cusps here, here we know that we have got the atrioventricular valves so the cusp of the tricuspid valve will bulge into the atria during that time also the pressure in the atria will increase that is depicted by the c wave right so when there is a ventricular systole the 
walls will bulge into the atria and that will cause a C wave. Okay. Next, we've got the V wave, which is due to the ventricular filling or uh, the atrial filling, which is due to venous return. See, via the vena cover, the venous return is entering into the atria and there is atrial filling. So that is why you now the pressure is increasing and that is depicted by the V wave. So to remember this, you can remember it as A is for atrial systole, C is when the cusp bulge into the atria and V is for venous return. So when you remember like this, you will know the cause of each of these uh, waves, the A, C and the V waves. So that is how you will draw the atrial pressure curve. Now moving on to the volume changes or the ventricular volume changes. So before you can show the volume changes, you have to first mark on the y-axis the different volume. So in case of left ventricle, we know that it should range from around 50 to 130 because 50 is our end systolic, 40 to 50 is our end systolic volume and 130 ml is our end diastolic volume. So the range it should be between 50 and 130. Okay. Now first phase is isovolumetric contraction phase. As the name suggests, it is isovolumetric. So there will not be any change in the volume. Okay, so you can draw a straight line at this 130 level. Next what happens? There is ventricular ejection. So at this time the volume will decrease. Okay, until it reaches the end systolic volume which is around 40 to 50 ml. Right? And then we've got the isovolumetric relaxation phase. So here again there will be no change in the volume because it is isovolumetric. Okay? So the volume will be constant. The next phase is the filling phase. So it is during this time that the volume in the ventricles will increase because it is being filled with blood. Okay. And then finally during the atrial systole phase, see by the time it has reached atrial systole, almost 75% of the volume of the blood has already flown. And it is only that additional 25% percent, uh, percentage is attributed to the atrial systole. So here you can see that there is a sudden increase in volume because of atrial systole. And now the volume is as the end diastolic volume, which is 130 ml. Okay. So that is how you'll draw the different volume or volume changes of the ventricle during a cardiac cycle. So you can draw two cardiac cycles and then mark it as the ventricular volume changes. Okay. Now our diagram will not be complete until we draw the electrocardiogram and the phonocardiogram. So first we'll see the electrocardiogram. So we know that the basic waves are the P, Q, R, S and T. So we know that the P wave is responsible for the atrial systole. So before the atrial systole, we have to draw the P wave, right? See, only, only after the P wave arises that there will be atrial depolarization. So before the atrial systole, we will draw the P wave. Then before the ventricular ejection, Okay, we know that it is when the ventricles are depolarized that it will contract and lead to ejection of blood. So, in, before that contraction, we have to draw the QRS complex showing that there is ventricular depolarization. So, before the ejection phase, you have to draw the QRS complex. And then we have got the T wave which represents the ventricular repolarization. So, the, by the end of this contraction phase, you have to draw the T wave showing that that is the uh, cause for the ventricular repolarization. So like that you can depict the electrocardiogram waves, the ECG waves on this diagram. And finally we have got the phonocardiogram which records the heart sounds. So in this diagram you can now show the heart sound. So remember heart sounds are formed due to closure of the walls. So here you can see that there is an AV valve closure here in the ISO before the isovolumetric contraction phase. So naturally your S1 will be in this phase. Okay. You can see that it is a, it is a decrescent pattern. It's around 10 to 11 waves and it's in a decreasing pattern. See, there was an AV valve closure here. So there's a heart sound here. Next, you can see that there is an aortic valve closure here in the isovolumetric relaxation phase. So here again, we'll have an S2 in which the waves are almost of the same uh, amplitude. And so that is the S2 wave corresponding to the aortic valve closure. Now we can have an S3 wave which is during the rapid filling phase of the uh, ventricles. Because of the ventricular filling, we can have an S3 also normally due, which is audible only during uh, high odd process like pregnancy. So like that you can draw it for the two cardiac cycles and mark it as a phonocardiogram. 
So these are the different components that you're supposed to draw when a diagram like this is asked. You have to draw all these components to show show that how each phase, even if it is a left ventricular pressure change, so you have to, it is good that you draw all, all the other components also. So to summarize, we to draw this diagram, we first uh, divided the phase into a systole and a diastole and then showed the different phases, the isovolumetric contraction, the rapid ejection and the slow ejection. And in the diastole, we showed the protodiastole, the isovolumetric relaxation, then uh, the rapid ejection, rapid filling phase, the slow filling phase as well as atrial systole. And then we marked the pressure, the pressure in the y-axis from 0 to 120. Then we showed how the pressure increases during isovolumetric contraction. Then there is rapid ejection, rapid ejection phase followed by the slow ejection phase. Then during isovolumetric relaxation phase, the pressure decreases. Then during the rapid filling and the slow filling phase, there is not much change. And during atrial systole, there's a slight increase in the pressure here. Okay. So like that, you can draw one more uh, cycle like that. Then we can show the uh, atrial pressure changes, the A, C and the V wave. And then the aortic pressure changes. Then you can draw the volume changes then. So remember to mark the end systolic and the di end diastolic volume in the y axis. And then you can show the volume changes. So initially it will be isovolumetric state, it will be constant, then it will decrease. Then during the filling phase will it increase and during the atrial systolic phase the rest 25 percentage of the volume will uh, increase and then you can draw the two cycles and mark it as ventricular volume then we've got the ecg electrocardiogram waves as well as the phonocardiogram waves so this is how you'll draw this vigors diagram which depicts all the different components of a cardiac cycle so i hope the concept is clear thank you